I'm very excited to announce the introduction of AB 2097, which is the Computer Science for All Act. This bill will guarantee that all students in California have access to computer science education and establish computer science as a high school graduation requirement in California. I'm thrilled to be here with State Superintendent of Public Instruction Tony Thurman, computer science teacher Amy Pizzoni, a fantastic student who will be sharing her story, Ratika Chaudhry, and Senator Josh Becker, a principal co-author of the bill. I also want to acknowledge and thank Assemblymember Wilson, who is also a principal co-author of the bill but couldn't join us this morning. Usually a legislator will hold a press conference uh, to introduce landmark first in the nation legislation. That's not why we're here today. 27 other states already require every high school to offer a computer science course. Five states, Arkansas, Nebraska, Nevada, South Carolina, and Tennessee, already require a computer science course for high school graduation. Then there's California. In fact, California has fallen behind 40 other states in the percentage of high schools offering at least one computer science course. This is unacceptable. This is as unacceptable as it is indefensible, and frankly, it's embarrassing. From Silicon Valley to Biotech Beach, California is the undisputed cradle of innovation, with over 45,000 high-paying computing jobs open and, uh, open and unfilled in California today. Too many students grew up in the shadows of these tech companies that are creating world-changing technology and offering good-paying careers, but they are not given, even getting the opportunity to learn the skills they need to one day work there. But the reality is that computer science is about so much more than just Silicon Valley tech jobs. Computers and technology are, integral, are an integral part of our everyday life and are relied upon in every industry in every corner of California. Research shows that computer science education develops computational, critical thinking, and problem-solving skills that are foundational knowledge for all students, regardless of their ultimate field of study or occupation. It is critical that we equip our students with the skills they need to enter the 21st century workforce and succeed in our digitally driven world. I'm proud to author AB 2097, which will guarantee access by requiring all public high schools in California offer at least one computer science education course with a phased in approach beginning in the 2026, 2027 school year. And this bill also takes the next step of establishing computer science as a high school graduation requirement by the 2030-31 school year. Not only will AB 2097 help provide the workforce needed for California to remain competitive with other states and other nations, but it is also critical in closing the existing gender and diversity gaps that exist today. If we are truly committed to computer science for all, we must pass this legislation. I would like uh, to now pass it over to California's Superintendent of Public Instruction, my former colleague in the Assembly, Tony Thurman, who is a key sponsor of this legislation. Thank you so much, Tony, for your partnership. Thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> you Assemblymember Berman, and thank you for your leadership uh, on this issue. You've championed this issue, and its time has come. Thank you, Senator Becker, um, Assemblymember Lori Wilson, and others who are also supporting um, this opportunity. You heard the need. Um, what I'd like to share with you is um, why it's going to get better. Uh, the chance for our students to uh, one day earn jobs that pay anywhere from $115,000 to $150,000 is very significant given where we are in California, like most states, the cost of living being so high, the ability to afford a home. These are the opportunities to allow our students to be prepared for the jobs of the future. Some would say the jobs of right now, uh, tremendous opportunity. You're going to hear from a great student who will, uh, Ritika, who will help you understand that these are the jobs of right now. Our students have the knowledge, they have the know-how, and they have the ability, but we have to be intentional and create the opportunities that there are somewhere uh, as my friends at, at CAPER, and they have this great program called SMASH to help young students of color and low-income students and women uh, get opportunities to be prepared for computer science, as they would say that there may be as many as 68,000 computing mm -hmm. jobs 
um, that can pay over $115,000 a year. The state is beginning to provide the foundation, but we have to go further, and that's why I'm honored to be a, a sponsor of AB 2097. This state provides $15 million for training for professional development uh, for educators. We offer scholarships for someone who wants to become a credential teacher. We have a $20,000 a $20, scholarship that the state can offer uh, to those educators. I want to thank all the sponsors who um, have come together to help make this opportunity a reality. Uh, California must lead as it relates to computer science for all and a computer science graduation requirement. Uh, thank you College Board, CS4CA, Kira Learning, Code.org, TechNEC, and others for making this happen. As we speak, uh, the California Department of Education is piloting STEAM academies uh, for young people uh, during the summer so that they can learn about um, opportunities in technology. We know that the jobs in any STEAM related uh, realm are plentiful, but they will go unfilled if our schools don't align with the needs of industry and the sectors uh, where these jobs reside. And so we're excited to help um, with this lift. Um, I've created a STEAM advisory council where we will have experts from the sector who can help guide what schools do in the interim until this requirement is created. I can't think of a more important thing for us to put our energy behind, uh, and I'm grateful for all of you uh, for being a part of it and looking forward to getting this computer science graduation requirement underway for the six million students of California. Thank you so much. Thank you, Superintendent Thurman, and thank you for uh, so much of your leadership over the past five years. Uh, and laying a lot of the foundation that we're going to need to be successful in this effort because we know it's going to be a big lift. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Amy Pizzoni, who is an award-winning uh, CTE computer science teacher. In five years, she has transformed her high school into a thriving dual computer science pathway with four CTE teachers, offering 15 courses in all areas of computer science at all levels of ability and interest. Her work allows students to engage in both state and national competitions, as well as add tech experience to their resumes through industry internships with local businesses. Amy also supports fellow teachers through conference presentations and mentoring, which we need so much if we're gonna build the, the teacher workforce that we need to, to, to accomplish this, this bill, accomplish this goal. So it's my pleasure to welcome Amy up to speak. Thank you, Amy. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Amy Pizzoni, a career technical computer science teacher at James C. Enochs High School in Modesto, located in California's beautiful Central Valley. I started as a computer scientist, working both in the public and private sector, and living in the Valley noticed the access to opportunities weren't what they could be, considering our, how close we were, our proximity to Silicon Valley. So I became a teacher to bring industry into the Valley classroom. Whether my students continue their computer, stu computer studies or not, the skills that they learn and apply in my classroom will give them a competitive edge in whatever industry they pursue, and the confidence to demand that technology meet their needs and the needs of those they love. Um, I was excited to hear about the Computer Science for All Act because I believe every student deserves to understand that their phone is not magic. <laughs> I want them to know they have the power to shape the future through becoming creators and influencers of the technology that is ever present in our lives. There is so much talent in the Central Valley and across California, and we all lose if we don't nurture that talent to its fullest potential. I, my proud contribution is the software and systems development pathway, started with then principal Amanda Moore at Enox High School. And within five years, I've been able to build it only with the support and hard work of our incredible Pathway teachers, our Enox site administration and staff, and the Modesto City Schools administration and staff. At 15 CTE computer science courses, two of which are capstones, SSD student-led leadership program, Girls Who Code Club, and many student internships with local businesses, our students are finding success in their lives. I would love to see something like this at every district in California. And it all starts 
with that first computer science class. Demystify computer science, encourage the, encourage the curiosity and wonder in our students, and open countless doors for their future. I am especially proud of my student, Ratika Chowdhury. Ratika is a thoughtful, creative, and inventive young woman, and I'm so glad she found her way to our pathway. Um, thank you for having me here today. My name is Ritika Chaudhary, and I'm a student studying computer science at Enox High School in Modesto. Initially, I think, I, wait, sorry. I think understanding why technology functions the way it does is one of the coolest things ever, and I'm so glad to have Mrs. Pazzoni as my computer science teacher because I get to learn a variety of exciting things from the tools that she provides us. Initially, I became interested in computer science in middle school where a small class was offered, but when looking at high schools, the school down the street from me didn't have any computer science classes. But when hearing about Mrs. Pazzoni's SSD pathway program at Enox, I chose to transfer there to quench my interest, even though it is about 15 to 20 minutes away from my home. However, it is well worth taking the different classes related to computer science. Courses within the pathway that I've taken include exploring computer science, artificial intelligence, 3D graphics and animation, web application development, and honor software engineering. I'm also currently participating in two internships, designing a children's book and being a part of an awesome team that creates graphic designs for small businesses within the community. I find it odd that people talk about how few girls there are in computer science because at first I didn't realize it was such a big deal. I was only one of three girls in my artificial intelligence class, but because Mrs. Pisani was my computer science teacher, I knew that women could work in this field too. In other words, I have such a wonderful role model. I hope to attend CSU Santa Claus, take more computer science classes, and become a web developer when I grow up. I am absolutely sure that there are other students like me that have the passion to take computer science classes, and I think it's only fair that these classes are provided to everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ratika, for, for sharing your story. And thank you, Amy, uh, for, for being a role model, model for being a mentor, and, and for creating uh, you know, the opportunity for, for students all around Modesto to, to kind of uh, have you as, as a role model and to, to seek to, to learn from and emulate. And it's amazing to hear kind of what you've created. So really appreciate all of your work. Uh, and it, it's, you know, uh, five years ago or so, pre-COVID, so it's all a blur, uh, I participated in a valley-to-valley -valley conversation where a lot of people from the Central Valley came over to Silicon Valley and we're talking about ag tech and all the different uh, industries where they need more, more people with computational skills graduating and going into those fields. So. This is a really perfect kind of example of, of that need. Um, next up, I want to introduce my, my counterpart in the state Senate, my, my colleague from Silicon Valley, Senator Josh Becker, who is a principal co-author on this legislation. Really appreciate your partnership, Senator Becker. Thanks, man. Yeah. First, I want to uh, thank Assemblyman Mark Berman for his leadership on this issue for many years. And I want to thank our superintendent for his leadership on all things education, including this issue. And thank you um, to our teacher and student who said it well. This is an idea whose time has come. We must offer computer science in our high school. We must give kids a chance, even a chance, a window into what this life could be like and a chance to participate in these jobs. We always talk about these are the jobs of the future. If we don't offer computer science in the schools, they have no chance. And if it's ultimately not required, many kids are not gonna do it. I'll speak as a parent, as two teenagers, growing up even in Silicon Valley. If these classes, if it's not required to take a computer science class, most kids, including my kids, are not gonna do it, right? So we have to first offer these classes to even give kids a chance. Some kids might take it and and um, first of all, it's gonna open up a window. There may be a game design class. It might be a related class where they say, okay, this is a path that I can take. Um, but if they take it, they might say, okay, I, you know, I, I, I learned something and move on. Other kids are gonna take it and it's gonna turn on that spark and they are gonna enter a career, a lifetime uh, working in technology in these industries. But if we don't offer these classes, we are not giving kids a chance, even in Silicon Valley, even our districts, many high schools do not offer computer science and we are not giving those kids a chance. So this is an idea whose time has come. 
Uh, I want to thank, again, Assemblymember Mark Berman for his leadership. And I'm looking forward to working with all of our colleagues to make this the year this gets done. Thank you. This, this is the year. Thank you, Senator Becker. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, again, I'm thrilled to be partnering with the Superintendent of Public Instruction, Tony Thurman, on this legislation, along with my colleagues co-authoring this bill, and all of the amazing computer science advocates who are here in the room today. This, this uh, is, is a long time coming. This is a, lo a lot of people, uh, a lot of different groups, a lot of nonprofits, a lot of advoc advocacy organizations, a lot of companies, uh, a lot of associations have been putting a lot of time uh, into making sure that every high school student in California at least has access to computer science education. And then, uh, w w to, and, and then once they have access, make it a, a, a graduation requirement. Uh, and so very grateful for all the people who have put in so much work uh, over the last half dozen years on this issue. Uh, I also want to make a special thank you to Amy and Ratika for coming to Sacramento and sharing your stories with us today. Uh, Ratika's story is the reason why I'm authoring this legislation. No student uh, like Ratika had to should have to seek out and commute to another high school just to access a computer science education in California. Her neighborhood high school, along with every high school in California, should offer a computer science education, and that is precisely what AB 2097 will achieve. I also want to emphasize, again, that computers and tech innovation exist in every industry in California. Tech is in agriculture, automobiles, entertainment, fashion, banking, marketing, and beyond. Every student needs to be equipped with these skills, whether they plan to work in Silicon Valley or the Central Valley. It's time to take the next step to ensure every high school student in California has access to computer science education, which will help close the gender and diversity gaps and prepare our students for today's and tomorrow's workforce. So with that, uh, happy to take any questions that folks have, and, and thanks again, everyone, for being here. So um, I, I authored a, a similar, similar bill last year. It didn't go as far. It did not have the graduation requirement that, that it's great to have in this bill. Um, and it did receive bipartisan support. And I think it receives bipartisan support because uh, every community across California is impacted. Like Senator Becker said, you know, in Silicon Valley, uh, we have high schools that are not even offering computer science education to their students. In the Central Valley, there are high schools that, that aren't. Down in Southern California, uh, and, and I think all of my colleagues, that valley to valley, um, meeting that we had, kind of tour that we had, was with a Republican colleague, uh, something where Heath Flora uh, was the one who brought some of his constituents over to Silicon Valley to have conversations. So, um, you know, this isn't a partisan issue. I think everybody realizes how important this is for the strength of their communities, for the future of their students. Um, and uh, I, I'm very confident that we're going to be successful. Uh, I can't speak to my good friend, uh, Assemblymember McCarty, and, and the experience that, that, that is a two-year bill. So, it, it, oh, you can speak to it? Perfect. Um, uh, but but I'm, I'm confident with the superintendent's partnership on this issue, uh, with the acknowledgement that everyone seems to have about how important this is for equity, uh, I think we'll be successful. But I want to turn it over to the superintendent uh, to, to fill in. The um, Assemblymember McCarty bill was a bill to create a personal finance graduation requirement. Ultimately, that bill was amended to say that it would be an option, um, that schools had to offer it as an option. Schools can already offer it as an option. And that underscores why this computer science uh, bill is intending to create a requirement. Because without a requirement, what we see all the time is that schools that have access to resource and means will provide it to students. And it shouldn't be that the zip code that you live in dictates if you get access to this training. And so that's why this bill uh, and the leadership that you're seeing from Assemblymember Berman and Senator Becker and others is critical to make sure that this is a graduation requirement, not an option, not an elective. And that will guarantee the equity that was described today that low-income students, students of color, young women will all get opportunities um, to have this important uh, learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I have one for you, Superintendent Thurman. Um, hey, so, 
You know, I think that between uh, the ethnic studies requirement, the West Pass, and the, the personal finance requirement that potentially headed to the ballot, yes. I think the, the third um, new graduation requirement is, is supported. And then, you know, I'm wondering, merits of all of those classes aside, if um, there's a risk of, you know, this is going to be cumbersome for students and schools. I think the risk is that um, sometimes people say, oh, where, where do you fit it in into the curricula? And that, a lot of times things get passed down um, in, as mandates and frameworks and, um, and there may not be enough time in the school day um, to, to offer it. But as Assemblymember Berman points out, the computer science has a nexus to so many subjects. It actually creates the opportunity to help teach uh, and reinforce other subjects, math and science and many things. And so it has the ability to be integrated into a school day. The best thing that, that, uh, that we can do to implement this graduation requirement or a personal finance graduation requirement or an ethnic studies graduation requirement is to work with great teachers that you heard from today who talk about how it fits into the daily schedule. If this can fit into a middle school class schedule or a high school class schedule, there's no question that we can do this across the state. And it'll be educators who will show us the way to make it um, uh, able to be integrated. Um, our, our students won't find this as cumbersome. They'll find this as an engaging way um, to help them learn, whether it's game theory or something else. It's, it, it's very interesting to them. And we know that when they have access to engaging uh, ways to learn, um, all students do better. And that's what I foresee. Can I add to that? Let's hear from the expert. <laughs> So that was one of the concerns I had with the pathway. We wanted students to be able to take classes that were fun for them, but not feel like they couldn't because they had to meet the high school requirements that didn't include computer science. So we have classes, we made sure they were all UC A to G certified. Mm -hmm. We have three of them are math classes, uh, five I think are uh, lab science requirements. We have several that are fine arts, fine and performing arts requirements, and only a couple are the G electives. So as students are pursuing their A to G requirements, we fit right in with uh, exactly what they're trying to do anyway. Um, also, articulation has helped with that, and State of California has been really great about helping community colleges partner mm -hmm. so that our students are getting college credit already through what we're doing. So whether kids go to college or not, they've got a resume builder and potentially something to move them over on the salary scale before even leaving high school. So hopefully that helps. We've been able to make it work, and I know it's possible. Um, as with many things that don't pass out of appropes, no, uh, I, I, I have not yet uh, gotten much of an explanation. But we're we're engaging, you know, we're we're essentially building upon the work that we did last year. We're, we're starting earlier with our conversations uh, with all the different stakeholders. We're trying to identify the concerns that they have, and and you know, make sure that as the bill moves through the the legislative process, that we answer as many of those concerns as possible. Uh, there are districts in California that are role models for us that we can already follow and look to uh, in terms of how we can implement this. And then there are states across the country uh, that have already done this. So I am very sympathetic to how challenging this is going to be. Uh, you know, nobody's going into this kind of blindly thinking that we can just flip a switch and immediately every high school in California can offer computer science. Um, but, but a couple of things. One is we can't afford not to. It's not fair to our students. It's not fair to their future. Um, and, and then again, you know, there are so many districts in California and states across the country that we can look to as, as uh, kind of role models to see what they're doing that might work here um, and, and how we can learn from them. So I'm confident uh, we'll, we'll have a, a, a better result than we had last year. And the one thing I've learned in now my eighth year in the assembly is sometimes it takes a couple of years to do good things. Um, so that's not gonna, you know, uh, a little, little setback last year won't stop us this year. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you again, everybody, for being here. Really appreciate your uh, either support for the effort or, or for paying attention to it, because this is going to impact every corner of California. Um, and uh, with, with the team that we have, I'm very confident that we're going to be successful this year. Thanks so much.